there. My name is Melissa and I am a mom here in Michigan and I am going to show you today I have a crock pot recipe. It is for carne asada steak. Um, so I am going to put a roast in the crock pot with all the flavorings and we will be able to have it tonight for dinner and then hopefully a little bit of leftovers throughout the week that I can make some lunch um, things with. And I did a very fun, I'm excited, if you're excited about kitchen things, uh, <laughs> you will like this. Um, I did a really fun thing and organized my spices in a different way um, than what I used to have. So I'm going to kind of show you uh, what I did and uh, quick tips on how to get organized and see everything you have. So let's get started. So this is... The before of how I used to have all my spices I had three of these bins um, and I just kind of threw all the spices in there every now and then I would try to rearrange them organize them try to keep track of what uh, I had and what I needed so I saw this actually on an Etsy and so this is what I decided to do I cleared out the drawer and look at that isn't that so exciting so now I have everything here um, I can see everything I have. If I have doubles, um, you know, I mixed them, and now I definitely have a better feel for what I have. And this was super simple. We, um, I ended up having to just buy a piece of this, um, I think it's like for carpets, to non-stick for carpets so it doesn't slide around the drawer when you're opening and closing your drawer too badly. Um, but we had this. So this, I'll lift up the end and show you. This is metal of what I have, but you can buy this in wood as well if you'd prefer to cut wood um, instead of uh, the tin snips, the metal. So this is like a corner round, a piece to go on the wall. Let's just say you're covering the corner of your wall here. So at the hardware store, um, right when I was showing Dan what it, he's like, oh, I have that. So um, you can get it in metal or wood, whatever's easier to cut. Um, I needed four rows. Um, I was able to fit four rows, and of course I kind of organized, you know, things I don't use as often back there, and um, the recipe I'm making today calls for um, garlic and onion powder and chili powder, so that's why this empty space is here, because I already have them on my counter to be used, but this uh, project was super inexpensive for us. Um, I ended up buying a big piece of this, it was $5 at Target, because that's where I was. I know they used to carry it at the Dollar Tree. Obviously, I was expecting the Dollar Tree. It would probably be smaller, and you know how that works. Extra trips do cost extra money. So I was there. That's what I got, and I am loving it. Of course, it's a hard time for me to remember that's what's in this drawer. Um, we had moved everything, so this drawer got a little organized next door. These used to be all of our um, baggies and things, so I keep pulling the wrong drawer. Um, just while we're in here, these little bins, you get three bins for $2 at Target. So I did that for the, um, drink powders. Obviously we like those and we have a few, uh, cookie cutters that we use. I know it's a mitten, but I call it Michigan. Our Michigan cookie cutter. And we got some ones coming up for Easter that we're going to use. So, um, just did some little... Drawer organization, super fast and fun, but I just had to show you. I love it. All right, I am going to prep uh, my carne asada um, steak, which is actually a roast. I see here what I have is a beef eye, a round roast. It is almost three pounds. Um, so I'm going to put the sauce down in the bottom of the crock pot first. Uh, it calls for 14 ounces um, of diced tomatoes. I had this tomato sauce handy, so I'm using that. And it called for the, um, what is this, a four ounce can of diced green chilies. Of course, you could use the Rotel, um, the tomatoes and chilies together. Um, you might want to use two cans because those are 10 ounces. And my roast, uh, the recipe calls for a two pound roast, so my roast is even a little bit bigger, so um, that might work that way. I'm gonna just stir it up. And I diced up one onion. That will go in. I love a crock pot meal, especially when I um, can use it the rest of the week. 
get some uh, further use out of it. My roast was still a little frozen, so I did put it in the um, microwave just to thaw a little bit. So I'm going to um, rub the spices on this and then put it in the crock pot. Uh, the things that we're using, I have here um, a teaspoon each of onion powder, garlic powder, and chili powder, and a quarter teaspoon of cayenne. Um, of course, the cayenne is what makes it spicy hot, like uh, that kind of spicy. So, you know, use more or less depending on your family's taste. I'm mixing it up in the little dish here because um, I'm going to rub it on my roast um, yep. and salt and pepper so a little salt and pepper also kind of pat it into the roast this way all of the meat that you have here will get that flavoring into it while it's cooking um, and so you're even you want to make sure the whole thing gets covered sides all the way around so most of the time when you buy a roast at the store, it's going to be similar to this, where you have one side that's lean and one side, this is all um, the fat side. When I cook it in the crock pot, I always put the fat side up. What I want is for as it slow cooks, for that fat to roll down the side of the roast and give us all that flavor. Um, and then once the roast is all the way done, usually um, you could just peel it off the top, cut it off the top um, out of the crock pot because I don't like to um, slice it up and eat it with the roast or anything, but just uh, like it to cook with it, give all that flavor. So I don't take it off while it's cooking. I just take it off when we're getting ready to cut it and eat it. So now I'm just going to set this into my crock pot here. Put the lid on and make have this go low at least seven hours. Um, and longer if you have longer um, and I will show you when it's finished how we're gonna eat it up so here it has been I think we are about eight hours later and here is my roast all finished so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out we have a little bit of time before we're gonna eat so I am going to take it out and chop it um, and then put it back in the juices there so it can, um, you know, soak up all that juice and make a nice uh, flavoring sauce for us. I um, don't know what I want to take it out of here with. I did not think ahead. Try a couple forks. Okay, so remember I did the fat layer on top, so I'm gonna just kind of do this and scrape all the fat layer off. Because I don't, I personally just don't chop that up and put that in there. Um, there'll be always some on there or whatever, but for now, just gonna do that. And then I think I'm gonna just go into it like this. Let's see. Very tender. See, it's shredding up there. Yeah, I need to be doing more of a shred and a chop situation. All right, here's my final piece all chopped up. So good it smells so good uh, that beef very beefy flavor um, those Mexican flavors just really really looks good I'm gonna let that um, hang out in there uh, while I mix up and chop up some of our side dishes we're gonna go along with this so we're gonna let this uh, just hang out 
I am making a few side dishes. I think that's one of the reasons I love Mexican is you kind of build your own. You decide what you're going to put on it and that's what makes it good. And then also I already know it's the start of my week. It's today's Sunday dinner. So whatever we don't eat, I definitely will take a lot for um, my lunches through the week. So I'm going to just stew up a couple cans of black beans. Um, so I'm going to put one can is drained and one can with the juice. That way you can kind of, like I said, makes a little stew, make some um, come together as, you know, like they do at the restaurant. I am just going to put in probably what equivalent to a teaspoon of onion powder and a teaspoon of garlic powder. And you know that um, canned beans are salty, so I'm not even gonna do any salt, but I'm gonna just do a couple shakes of some regular black pepper. And I'm just gonna put this as low as my stove top will go, um, probably with the lid off and just kind of let it hang out. And it'll be some nice little flavorful beans to put on top or on the side. The next topping I'm gonna make as an option for our carne asada uh, burritos or tacos. I'm going to do a quick corn salsa. Um, so I am just going to do one can of corn that has been drained and I bought these bag of mini sweet peppers. So I'm just going to pick out some of the red peppers and chop them up and put them in here. I don't know that I'm even going to put anything else on there. I do want this to be on the sweeter side. So I'm not wanting to put the onion and garlic in here. I just am not feeling those flavors right now for the corn. I'm wanting the sweet, like the sweeter red peppers um, and the sweet corn to be a balance to anything that could be spicy or hot on our Mexican dish. This looks good to me. Just a little mixture. I'm going to put this in the fridge because um, I want this nice and cold. So I'm going to put this in the fridge while I finish up everything else. So the last component that I'm going to make up is a pico, a fresh homemade pico. This is something I absolutely love when I have um, tomatoes in the garden that um, I can make. So it is something I make more often in the summer than this time of year, but it just sounded so good. So I do like to take the inside out of the tomato, all that part there. Um, that's why Roma tomatoes are good for that because there isn't much. Um, and then each time on the tomato, it's gonna be slightly different um, of how much is in there. You could just use your hands, take it out. Um, and it's the easiest thing, this fresh homemade pico de gallo or salsa or whatever you wanna call it. And it is comes together really quickly and just nothing tastes the same as when you chop it all up and mix it all up yourself. Then also you can um, season the way you like, um, more or less of heat or anything like that. So I'm just going to be here chopping. Of chopping <laughs> these are eight Roma tomatoes um, and tomatoes take a lot of salt you are gonna need a lot of salt in this so don't be afraid of the salt I am even going to Here's do something I found a little bit of web. pepper according to special I'm not talking to you com, echo turn off Roma she thought I was talking to her okay so um, and then the next things so the only things that I put in there um, is I'm going to chop up my red onion. I'm going to chop up one jalapeno. And I think I'm going to chop up pretty much all of this cilantro. And I do like to use the stems too. There's tons of flavor. They're still tender. 
Um, so definitely don't pick it all off the stem. Use some of the stem and everything too. And then we're going to mix it up. And then, you know, uh, when it's fresh like this, it doesn't last forever. You're going to have to eat it pretty quickly. But, you know, if it can sit out and sit in the fridge for a little bit to all cool, come together, um, it'll be even better. I'm going to chop my onion super, super small. Um, let me try my best to do that. There we go. Let's go down like this. I personally just don't like biting into a piece of onion like that. So try to do it, but obviously onion, you gotta, you need that in your fresh salsa. And that's why I like this red onion, purple onion, whatever you call it, a little bit better because it is more mild. And I'm doing one on the smaller side. Again, it's it's not my most favorite flavor. And that's the beauty of doing it at home. If that's the part you feel like when you buy it, there isn't enough ever for you. You get to chop up more at home. And so just a little bit about chopping technique. I know it's not the best angle, but you can kind of see I keep my knife tip down on the board and I'm just lifting the back up and just rocking it. And that gives you more control over what you're doing instead of chopping all the way down like this, but just to go down. And you definitely want to have a really sharp knife when you're doing this. Um, dull knives is like the number one reason why people cut themselves um, because the knife isn't sharp enough. It's not going through whatever you thought you were chopping and it slides and gets you instead. That was a pretty strong onion for being a red onion. The last few times I've bought jalapenos, they were very mild. But I can tell you already, I'm smelling that red onion and I'm definitely smelling this jalapeno. So maybe it will be a little bit spicier. Try to cut really thin strips and then use this other method going this way like that. And it takes practice. So just, just keep practicing. over it all again if you feel like it didn't get small enough. There we go. Super, super flavorful. We got this cilantro ready to go. I try to keep this together as much as possible. Go back over it. Very, very stems at the bottom. I think that's good. This looks like a lot of cilantro, so I will see. I'm going to kind of use the method of just putting some in there. Stirring it up, see what I think. That sure seems like a lot. Let's switch places here. Oh my gosh, the smells right now are amazing. Just so good. Oh, I'm so glad I did this today. It takes a little more time. Definitely got some chopping practice in today with this meal but this looks really really good i think it could take a little bit more and then we always can have more cilantro on the side um, i even have some rice that i previously made that's frozen um, to make bowls if i wanted to with this uh, like i said definitely hope to have a little bit of leftover so i can make a lunch and see what we have so there we are fresh pico 
So we have everything ready for dinner. So I've got, people can make their choice. I got taco sized tortillas, burrito sized tortillas. We still have some of these tostadas. Um, and here is our beef carne asada. So good with a corn salsa, a fresh pico salsa. Here is our black beans all stewed and flavorful together. And then of course some sour cream or cheddar cheese. So I want to say thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, I just can't wait to keep sharing with you what we are going to be having for dinner um, and all the good things that are happening in my kitchen. Bye.